Welcome, my name is Althea Viafora Kratz. I'm sitting in the Vernissage Lounge, the Grizzly Lounge, at the Scope Art Fair 2007. Today we're doing an impromptu curating, a hypothetical exhibition that's been inspired by the works at the Scope Art Fair. Hen Tamir is a budding, young Israeli-Canadian curator and art critic. She will graduate in May 2007 from Bard College with an MA from the Center for Curatorial Studies. Her upcoming shows include Stutter and Twitch, an exhibition about stasis and time, and Grizzly Proof, a collaborative project with Flux Factory, a Queens-based art collective, which she is a member. Chen holds an M a B FA in visual art and a BA in anthropology. She's based in Toronto, Tel Aviv, and New York. Welcome, Chen. Thank you. This is a photograph by Dean Baldwin, a young Canadian artist called Tuxedo Shower. Um, what he's done is he's recreated a scene from an old Cary Grant movie. And this is uh, on the corner of the Gladstone Hotel. That's Dean actually hanging off the corner of the building. This is a work by Mike Peter Smith from 2005. It shows a rather pathetic looking um, man in jeans, but also sort of primordial on this, the edge of an abyss. And the glass on top, which is water, I'm not sure if you can see it from this angle, but it gives it a very cinematic feel. There's a narrative to it. This is a work by Vic Kosik, a Slovenian artist, and he's taken an iconic scene from Casablanca and rendered it in ASCII code. Um, it's interesting in that it's a way of reprocessing a received image, cinematic image. This is Feast, an art collective out of Virginia. I chose this work because it's pathetic and funny and self-deprecating, and it's also very cinematic. Um, if you notice, the first shot or the shot on the left starts out small, then medium, then large. That's the money shot um, we, that we can all identify and love. This is Shannon Wright, and it's another cinematic work in terms of a linear set of frames and it's an instruction manual. It's actually called manual um, on how to go to the bathroom without touching anything. And tell us how you chose and why you chose these works for your hypothetical exhibition. Well, at first I used to be really suspicious of art fairs, but I kind of enjoy them now because I realized that they're really great for their immediacy, for for serving contemporary art, or at least the kind of art that's for sale. But still, um, the sheer turnover kind of ensures um, an immediacy and a currency. That's what markets do. Um, so I'm trying to pick up on something that young artists of my generation that are showing here are up to. Um, and I'm very, I've got, you know, I, I really enjoy film, and it's sort of been a lifelong interest for me. And recently, I've been very sensitive to irony and nostalgia. Um, and I think that those can be generational things as well. Um, you know, I think that satire is actually an, an irony or the result of disappointment or some kind of unfulfilled expectation. Um, I think Graydon Carter from Vanity Fair said that 9-11 was the end of the era of irony, and I don't think I agree, actually. Um, there has been a growing wave of sort of neo-romantic works and works that are in general kind of nostalgic and I think that that's a symptom of the same thing as irony. Um, they're both the result of disappointment and stress. Um, they're kind of two sides of the same coin, if you will. Um, you can see that kind of nostalgia and irony even in fashion when you're looking at what people my age are wearing. There's, you know, return to the 70s and 80s especially. like. Um, and that's, you know, my childhood, or our childhood, which was a time of security, um, a, a, a sort of ignorant bliss, if you will, um, that was before the world was going to end because of the environment, that was before 9-11. Um, so yeah. as a curator, when you came into the Scope Art Fair, did you have in mind 
a theme or a subject that you were looking for as you walked through the fair and you looked at the individual works of art? Or did it just grow and reveal itself organically because this is so generational for you? Um, I can't say that I came in with a very specific theme, but I do have my own set of interests and I do have things that I'm thinking about. You know, and I knew that I was going to come here and talk about some works that I thought were interesting or that I thought, um, you know, would be emblematic of some kind of show or that could be put together in some kind of show that would. So, so I guess as I was looking at works that could play off each other in an interesting way. And it seemed that these concepts. I mean, you are a anthropologist. You have a bachelor's degree in anthropology, so you look at these subjects as an anthropologist might, with the social ramifications or the representations of a particular generation. But if you're curating with that vision, how do you think about your audience, if they might be older than you are, if they're collectors who are established? Do you think that they can read the same information from these works as you might? I think so. I mean, I'm not. I'm not curating a show for collectors or for anyone with any kind of. I mean, this this hypothetically would be a show that would be open to all audiences, young and old. Um, yes. And who would it speak to? I guess it would speak to sort of younger people, but I don't think that would necessarily, you know, limit anyone else from sort of liking the show. I think a lot of these works. What's interesting about some of them together is that they. Um, they're kind of reenactments in a way. They're a way of sort of taking some kind of received situation, reprocessing it, and um, it doesn't have to be a filmic situation. It could be some kind of idea, but it's, I think yeah. that that's a way of processing an experience or a culture or you know what we're going through. And collectively, yes. if you look at that, that could be a really anthropological way of looking at things. And I like to look at stuff sort of with the big picture in general. Yes. You know, I think that's where my anthropology comes into play is to look at how people take their culture, what happens when artists become the voice, you know, the mouthpiece of, of whoever they're representing. And at this point, I'm, you know, I'm thinking generationally, but that doesn't necessarily have to be. And the artists you chose, they're, they're collectives, they're individuals, they're male, they're female, and they're also varying ages. So they're representing our times, certainly, yeah. but the the makers of those particular works were seemingly quite varied. The last piece that we saw with the woman eating her donuts, you know, was certainly of another generation. A slightly older generation, although I think a lot of them are engaged definitely with pop culture. Yes. I think that that's something it's a young interest. It's Absolutely. Not, it's, you know, it's and, not something very special. And seeing, just as you said, seeing that something that was iconographic, that existed before, such as Casablanca, and then using a, an old new medium that you had described, the early computer text, as the medium itself, as the points of reference to make the drawing and the video itself. So it, they, it was a narrative in terms of medium, generation. Exactly. It's a, it's a way of reprocessing cultural history in a way and making it your own. And I, had, I felt with the works that you chose, this, your hypothetical exhibition, that the works themselves, as you would describe, have a narrative, but there was also the narrative of the curator's voice and the curator's vision as well. And these other exhibitions that you're curating, mm -hmm in the near future, did you follow a similar process in terms of selecting the artworks? Well, I like seeing shows as narratives. I think that, you know, even though an exhibition is traditionally hung on walls, you experience it, it's, you walk through it, um, and that can be an experience within itself. Yes. Uh, and I like seeing linear experiences like that as something cinematic. That's, you know, you walk through here the same way you might drive down a street or something like that, and I think that those can be really cinematic experiences, Absolutely. and that's the final product. But there is a process, I think, of, you know, walking and experiencing these pieces. Well, you were saying earlier that it was both the journey and the journey to the destination in terms of curatorial ideas. We have one minute. Right, right. Yeah, you asked me about how I curate, and if that's a... 
a journey or a destination. I'd say it's a bit of both. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank at you. Your Massage TV. Thank and we'll look forward to seeing your future exhibitions. Yeah, let's go. Thank you, Althea. You're welcome.